hello everyone welcome again so in this video we'll continue our previous session uh, in the previous lecture we have discussed a very high level overview of how the internet works and what happens when you open a website so now we'll slowly dig deep into each say each of the section and in this video we will discuss in detail about the IP configuration that your PC needs to get connected to the internet so as I have discussed previously there are two ways your PC can get the IP address one is either you set up the IP address statically that has been provided by your internet service provider and the second one is your PC dynamically uh, obtains the IP configuration from your ISP if you uh, select that option uh, in, in my previous slide in the previous video I have shown that window where you have that option to select whether you need to assign the static uh, static IP address or uh, you have the option to obtain the IP address dynamically so I will I will show you uh, the IP configuration of my laptop so you need to open cmd in case of windows i have opened cmd if you are using linux you can open your terminal so i will just type ip config if you are using linux you can type if config you will get the same output so i am now connected directly via the wi-fi so I will scroll down and I will come to the wireless LAN adapter section. If you are not connected via Wi-Fi and if you are directly connected via LAN, you need to look into this section. As I am connected via Wi-Fi, this section is empty in case of me. So if you look here, see the IPv4 address. So 192.168.0.112, this is the IP address that has been given to my PC through by my ISP and then the second option is subnet mask now what is a subnet mask we'll discuss in detail in the IP addressing videos later but uh, for now we should know that the subnet mask tells us up, up to what part of the IP address is the network part and what part of the IP address is the host part and the default gateway so what is default gateway so your computer computer by default doesn't know how to reach to the websites so whenever you are typing a url and you uh, after you get the ip address of that website your computer uh, tries to reach to the website via the default route which is 0, .0, .0, 0, 0.0.0.0 in each and every case this uh, 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 this ip address is called as the last resort or the default route that means when you don't know how to reach to any website you use this route so most of the cases this default route is connected with the default gateway so default gateway is nothing but a router uh, which is present at your isp this router knows how to reach to the other websites or this router already has the routes which are configured to reach to that websites but your pc doesn't have those routes so to reach to other websites, your PC always uses this route. You can also configure static routes in your computer, but uh, to access internet or to access the websites, we don't need any static routes as of now. So default gateway, this configuration is also obtained from your internet service provider automatically. And uh, that link local IPv6 address that you can see, so there are two types, two types of IP addresses. One is IPv4 and other is IPv6 ipv4 is a 32-bit uh, address so the max number of possible ip addresses with ipv4 is 2 to the power 32 you can calculate the number you will get a huge number but that number is not enough to uh, suffice the uh, i mean need for the entire world population yeah before 90s that 32-bit 32-bit ip address space was sufficient but nowadays almost all of us are using almost uh, three to four networking devices so you can imagine the number of ip addresses needed so that's why the ipv6 ip address was invented and ipv6 is a 128 bit ip address and uh, 
the number of IP addresses possible with IP v6 is 2 to the power 128. You can calculate the number, you will get a huge number. So that is sufficient for, I, I think, forever. And uh, so right now, still we are using IPv4, but slowly over the next 10, 15 years, we'll transit into IPv6 addresses. So, so other than these uh, three IP, okay. So link local IPv6 address, what is this address? This IP address is also given by your ISP just to test the connectivity between your PC and the ISP router. It doesn't uh, show anything, any any connectivity uh, from your PC to internet. It, it can only show whether your PC can be reached from the internet service provider or not. Or whether your PC is at least connected to the internet service provider or not. So if you are not able to access internet, when you call your ISP service, they check via this IP address whether your PC is uh, reachable from their end or not. And then they troubleshoot further. So other than these configurations, uh, there is another configuration that you get that is the DNS server IPs. So DNS server IPs, why these are needed? Uh, like I have said in my previous video, uh, suppose you are trying to open google.com but you don't know the IP address of google.com. So in that case, you you query the DNS server. So the DNS server IP address that uh, you get from your ISP is your ISP D ISP's DNS. And uh, if your ISP's DNS doesn't know the IP address of the website you are trying to reach, it recursively queries the root name server, the TLD name server, and then the authoritative name servers. This is how you get the IP address of your destination website. And uh, uh, this is how you get the IP address of your PC through uh, via statically uh, assigning IP or via DHCP. So r now I am getting this IP address and all the configurations automatically from my ISP. How I am getting that? It's via a protocol that is called DHCP. It's a dynamic host configuration protocol. So my PC is the host here. And uh, as the name suggests, it's dynamically configures my host and uh, I don't need to put anything from my end in this case and uh, uh, DHCP is a protocol so what is a protocol protocol is is the uh, some set of rules which governs the communication so we'll discuss a lot about the protocols later in upcoming videos but uh, for this video I mean this is the significant of the configuration that you get from your ISP and once you get all all of these things after that you can log into your ISP portal and log in and then you can access so uh, in this video I will uh, conclude it here and in the next videos we'll dig deeper into other topics so thank you for watching bye bye